and welcome to Diverse and Inclusive Leaders, a podcast show where I interview the most inspirational and thought-provoking leaders of today and unearth their unique stories of diversity and inclusion to help make, shape, inspire, educate others into making the world a better place. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by the very, very lovely Charlotte Speak. Sharla is a strengths and talent consultant. She coaches both women and men who are returning back to work or whom are making a career change and supporting employers through the line manager or returnee workshops. She operates with very high potential strategy. She's a specialist in career pivots and transitions. And she's had many, many years of exceptional experience working for the likes of ASDA, where she was an internal strength scope coach, um, and she was also working within the commercial field at Next Group PLC. So Charlotte is very well qualified to now be really coaching um, those returning individuals back to work and really helping support them when it comes to really going through those very difficult often and challenging times where, where people are transitioning back into their careers after potentially a period of time off or returning after first, second, or, or third children. So welcome to the show today, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. And I'm delighted to, to have you on the show here today because I think actually what you're speaking about and what you're doing is such a critical, critical piece in helping executives with their career. I think it's such a key time for people. And I think it'll be wonderful to, to really kind of explain to our listeners some of the pieces that you're doing at the moment, any of the key projects, and also for us to find out a little bit more about you and how you came to be doing what you're doing right now and obviously running the Power of the Parent business, which you founded. I did, yeah, just over a year ago. Wow. So tell us, how is all of that going and what have you been doing recently? What are some of the kind of current projects that you've been working on? So there's lots of lots of consistency in the conversations I have um, and it tends to stem from two camps so one is I will work with individuals and they will approach me and they tend to be at a place where they're about to return to work and they're starting to feel the fear a little bit and that fear doesn't necessarily come from not wanting to return or not wanting to return to their employer it's more the practicalities of how am I going to fit life in you've just had a spell of maternity leave or uh, some sort of shared parental leave or adoption leave and suddenly think I got stuff done and I spent loads of time with this small person or small people where do I fit into that now in my career and having a life (laughs) not just surviving but thriving so a lot of the conversations that I'm having with individuals at the moment is about that how do you fit everything in how do you still maintain a sense of identity and not just becoming, you know, you, you spent, let's say, a, a year or, or thereabouts going to baby groups and mum's groups and, and all that kind of thing, where you've been called somebody's mummy. You very rarely get asked your own name. And, you know, even your kid gets a label, a sticky label. I remember going to to one where, there were, you know, these beautifully printed labels where my little girl had a nameplate. I didn't. And then you go back into the workplace and it's like, who am I again and what am I good at and how can I do all of this? So I spend a lot of time working with individuals in in that way. And then with businesses, I think, you know, the big things that are coming out, it's not, um, it's not rocket science, but common sense isn't always common practice. And those conversations tend to be around line manager support. So there are lots of studies out there by incredibly clever people who have put the numbers behind and the evidence behind um, line manager and their behaviors and how they engage people is one of the biggest levers to engagement. So we spend a lot of time talking about what's the role of a line manager, why uh, do things go wrong, uh, some of that is is not always intentional, so how do we make those times as pain-free and quick as possible and how do you upskill somebody when they're coming back to think about their strengths and what motivates and energizes them because if you have had a significant period of time out of the workplace, be that maternity leave or career break, they 
are, they're not in a headspace of talking about their last appraisal or what their KRA achievement was the previous year. But you can get back to grips with who you are and painting it quite vivid pictures about when you're energized and when you're at your best. So it's about giving line managers the skills to do that as well. So you, that you go from both sides. Absolutely. So there's some really key pieces there. And I'm really excited to learn more about some of these points that you brought up, especially that kind of that loss of identity. So I have a number of friends who have had children and they've come out of really quite high powered jobs or roles where they're required a huge amount of the time and suddenly they come back and they almost they don't know who they are. So I think that loss of identity piece would be fantastic to talk about and um, that personal identity being able to fit everything in. And as you quite rightly say, how line managers can really be able to support and look at those specific skills for, for returners. But before we kind of go into delving deeply into these, these critical subjects, I'd really love to, for you to share with our audience a little bit more about you personally, because I know that everyone be, who is tuning in today will be very keen to kind of hear about how you took what is, I feel, a very brave step and plunging into actually setting up your own business from working in some very, very big corporate businesses, you know, the likes of Asda, the retailer Next. I mean, these are household names that we all know. And there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that work for these organizations are actually branching out and starting up your very own business after a significant period of change in your personal life. It must have been quite scary. So Talk to me a little bit about your personal situation, how you found yourself in that situation and some of the motivating factors that really drove you to start, uh, to start up the power of the parent. So I have two little girls and as, as smushy as it sounds, they are absolutely my reason for being. Um, and I had very mixed experiences in t- returning to work. I had some incredibly um, high high points um, and I still had career highs and massive achievements after I had my first little girl but I also had some really low points as well um, and so my eldest is coming up to uh, being five so she started school last year and then my youngest has just turned two mm-hmm. and they're at, they're at a, a, a very different ages and they have incredibly different needs but what is always consistent that I see is that they absolutely look up and uh, look up to me. They look up to their dad as well, but they, they do, they, they're very interested. Certainly my eldest um, is very interested in what mummy does. Um, and she's, she is now trained when she is, uh, when she's playing her little make-believe games. I, my heart swells with pride because she pretends to be a coach who helps women go back to work. Um, and, uh, I've got my branding on point when it comes to family. They can, they can sum it up. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a gorgeous picture, actually, of your two girls on one of your LinkedIn articles. So I, I do follow and, and read up on what you do uh, with fascination. And it was so lovely. Absolutely gorgeous family. Gorgeous family. And some really interesting articles, which I'm sure many of our listeners can relate to. Thank you. I, I, I love writing, which is, you know, another bit of me, really. And I, It all started when I was on maternity leave with my second little girl and I started blogging um, more about my experiences of being a parent or um, how I was feeling. And uh, because I found second maternity leave quite lonely, um, it was very different to my first. I didn't have as many friends having babies at the same time and um, just, yeah, lots of personal changes while we moved house. All of these things culminated in the, that feeling of loss of identity and feeling like I was isolated. And some of that was self-imposed isolation, I realise now looking back. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was everything. I, I fitted into a lot of the, the cliches, but, you know, cliches are a cliche for a reason, aren't they? So I had an opportunity at the end of my second maternity leave to make a fresh start and it felt something that I'd been wanting to do since going back from my first maternity leave a few years before that I the, it just felt like there should be more to it when you when you're returning it shouldn't feel difficult it shouldn't feel like you are you know a rabbit caught in headlights and you should be able to go back with a, a level of confidence what you know that is to varying degrees for different women but you should be able to go back and retain that sense of 
I am good and I am still energized and motivated by things. And I didn't just stop developing because I had a baby. In actual fact, I've got loads of skills that I've developed over the last however many months and years of parenting that are applicable in the workplace. And I I know that that it's quite divisive with people when you talk about that. But for me, that's something um, that is is really in, in line with what I believe. And that's where Power of the Parent came from, because it was about getting your superpowers back and your superpowers are your strengths. And that's something that I've worked with for a long time um, as a strengths coach, that before working with parents uh, specifically, I coached a lot of people in, in a corporate environment. A lot of the time they were going through change and that tended to be through promotions mm-hmm. and progression. When you are, you, you suddenly, you're going from the very top of your game and the top of your leadership level to hang on a minute, I'm in a different pool of people here. How do I find my feet? How do I, again, bring that confidence? So it felt like the absolute right area to focus on when it came to skill set and methodology when I was working with clients. And it just fits really beautifully. So I now spend a lot of my time working one-to-one or working within businesses. And that's either through direct coaching conversations, but actually workshops work so well. Um, I've run some public workshops earlier this year with um, with a really mixed group of women who were at different stages of their return. So some were about to return. Some had actually returned about two years ago and they were facing this oh my word, I've, I've got comfortable, I've got back in, my child's happy at um, you know, whatever daycare they've gone for and now I want a bit of me back. And that, that question of where do I come into this comes at different points for women. So sometimes it's right at the beginning of that return, other times it's you know, further in where they've built a, a level of comfort back again and they want to shake things up a bit. And that shaking up doesn't have to be about you know, leaving an employer or making some grand change, it can sometimes just be get it, getting more of what you're energized by into your day job. And that for me isn't aspirational. That can That is something that we can do in a very real way. So that's just, yeah, that's the bit that I absolutely love and adore. Whether that's working with returners, I also end up doing quite a lot of work with grads. Diff- different, but strengths works really beautifully with grads as well. So... Um, I think fundamentally for me, it's very much about doing as much as you can of what you love and and not just saying it and thinking, yeah, I'll do it one day, but how do you do it now? Absolutely. And one of the key pieces that was coming out from everything you were saying there was really that confidence piece. For those who are tuning in today who are, you know, potentially their parents already or they have children on the way or they're thinking about having children one day like I am what would you say to to our listeners who are out there and who are starting to feel a little bit nervous starting to feel a little bit concerned or have actually experienced that lost identity and really need to have that extra zhuzh to kind of get them back feeling a hundred percent and that they can do it what would you say to them I would always you've got to start with your personal values and knowing what motivates you because they're the things that will help you remind yourself of who you are so um and and remember that you can't pick values values pick you so spend some time and and get feedback from people and that's that's a very formal way of saying it go go and have a chat with your friends it doesn't have to be um in a work context even because you know who you are is who you are Um, it might manifest slightly differently when you're at home versus at work but you are driven by the same thing so remind yourself what lights you up think about the times when you felt happy like a pure joy and happiness what were you doing who were you with think about the times when you've experienced you know really rapid learning and pick something up quickly or when the times passed really quickly as well you you sort of lose yourself in what you're doing i give yourself some reflection time and and get to grips with here here are what my values are here are what my strengths are and 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 therefore what energizes me and and piece those together and when you've built up this picture of those two areas that's for me is step one base one um and it gives you the opportunity to remind yourself who you are because you're then looking at you on a page and then you can start to have the conversations about what's going to make me happy when am i at my best what does success look like 
Success is a big question, um, particularly post-parenthood and going back to work. We don't often define success in the same way as we did pre-children. And that's okay. And you've got to give yourself permission to allow these changes to happen and that you're no less of a person than you were before. You still, you are enough. You will be enough for your child, for your employer. But ultimately, you've got to, you have got to put yourself first, which is a very, it's a very alien feeling after kids. And I think to varying degrees. So some, sometimes I will be very easily quite you know, selfish, if we want to use that word. I will think nothing of putting my, um, my need for exercise first during the day. So I've, I've just got back from the, from the gym um, because I know that I'm not going to fit that in at any other point today. But if I don't go and have a bit of you know, physical um, outlet, then I, I'm not going to be the best version of me. So you have to be able to say, this is who I am. This is what I need. And this is what's in line with my values. I will then be a much better person at work and at home and for my children and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately for for you. Um, So I think, yeah, starting, start with your values and your strengths. You can't go wrong. That's really fantastic advice. Really fantastic advice. So it's get everything onto the page, have some really strong reflection time, make sure that you're looking at your values, your strengths and who you really are. Because once you've found out what those key things are that motivate you, and you know, this reminds me very much about when I have my head hunting hat, uh, my head hunting hat on and I'm asking people what they really want to do next and asking them to dig deep, very, very similar. Then once you have that, you can actually look at what it is that makes you happy and some of those critical kind of success factors. And yeah. I know that you wrote about this in one of your articles on LinkedIn as well. What does success look like for you, Charlotte? It's, I I think it changes a little bit for me uh, every now and again. And um, uh, for me at the moment, it's very much about having quality time with my family is a big success for me uh, or a success indicator. So when I have the time, I don't want to just be doing little bits I want to be able to be present and that's a big thing so whatever I'm doing um I want to be wholeheartedly involved so family is it will always be and it's one of my biggest values so it'll always be the first thing that I say I think after that um success is about helping other women um, and I, I'd love to help dads as well. And I do get, you know, I have lots of anecdotal conversations with, with dads. They're not quite there yet. I don't think with, with having the same level of, um, of a conversation, but, you know, bring it on. So I think ha- being able to help my clients is always a, a sign of success for me. And, and having a, a, a really diverse and variety based uh, client base is, is important. You know, I don't, not everybody is going to be, uh, the right client for me and I'm not going to be the right coach for everybody so that's a, a big thing that I want to be able to coach the right person for, for each of us and then I think also you know from a, a personal perspective I like going on holiday part of success for me is is calling that out and you know, let, I, let's not pretend that we all want to sit at you know a desk or a home office or whatever wherever you work we don't want to sit there all the time working. We want to be able to go and enjoy life. So I think for me, it's about feeling happy and, and being in a place where I am, I am happy. And then I think, you know, broader brush, and this is, and I mean, this is the dream that we, we are, we, as, as mothers, people can go into businesses and you feel no ounce of, of um, kind of being on edge of, do I declare that I've got kids? And should I, at what point do I, you know, say that I'm, I, I am a little bit bound by school runs and all those kinds of things. I just want people to be able to bring them hot, their whole selves to work. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and in life really as well, I suppose, but we'll, we'll go after that later. But first and foremost, but being, but being able to bring your whole self to work is a, and helping people do that is a big success marker for me. I absolutely concur. I think the more we bring our whole selves to work, the better businesses get out of us as well. You know, there's nothing worse or more draining than pretending to be something that you're not or feeling like you have to say certain things just because they're going to tick the right boxes. That is absolutely the dream. I I certainly share that with you, Charlotte, on on bringing your full self to work. And I think it's certainly a lot, a lot of the the topics that, that we speak about when it comes to diversity and inclusion revolve around that point, around that authentic 
And I know that's probably a word that's overused an awful lot right now, and I hope it doesn't get so in the future, but really being authentic and being able to be true to yourself, um, I, I think is key. Um, so just moving on to, I, I can't believe it's, uh, it's nearly half an hour already, my goodness, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to summarize and just ask another couple of quick questions before we, we head off for today's session. But what does diversity and inclusion mean to you, Charlotte? I think that's one of the biggest things for me. It's being able to bring your whole self um, to work, to your friends, to whoever you're talking to. And I think it is, it, it's about having this incredibly rich rainbow of voices um, and opinions and experiences and, and, a, and being able to voice that in a, in a safe and, um, and calm environment. And, and that, I'm all for everybody getting animated and of course you want you've got to be able to spark thought and different and differences in people as well if we if we were all the same it would be so boring um, and also I think it closes you off as well and you can become quite rose tinted I'm very very aware that social media in particular can become an echo chamber you know you you follow people who are similar to you or have um, similar views then when you get into the real world and that isn't the case, it can be a real shock to the system. Um, and that's something that I've worked with on a couple of clients with on a couple of um, instances where they've, they've spent a lot of time on maternity leave, you know, sat there feeding the baby. You naturally will be scrolling on social media and actually you are following people who have the same opinions as you that make you feel safe, that make you you know think actually the world isn't quite as, as bad and then when you get out there that's sometimes where the shock comes from for people so yeah 100% whole self and and having a really rich tapestry and rainbow of of different walks of life and opinions and experiences I just think it's a a really wonderful thing when it happens I love that expression the rich rainbow that's wonderful (laughs) really really wonderful okay and just um, another couple of quick questions just before we summarize some of the learning points from today who have been the key inspirations throughout your life? Um, I think, oh, again, probably a bit of a cliche, but my mum my was a single parent from when me and my sister were, were quite young. And it was just the three of us for quite a few years. And she worked like three different jobs at any given time. But she, she did a lot of that through um, a very secure family network as well. So I'm incredibly close to my grandparents um and not it, it it's not a, a a woman but my my granddad is a massive inspiration to me as well like he he had a really tough upbringing but he completely he is the epitome of understanding diversity and inclusion like he's so curious and interested by loads of different people loads of different businesses he he follows me on social media he loves a bit of instagram oh <laughs> and uh he and I, so i think I think there is. I think there is a gap, to be honest, for um, role models in terms of um, parents speaking out about when things have gone well and smoothly. I'd love to hear more stories from people, but they don't often. They don't often share them until you know a later date. So I think for me, it's probably quite close and and local heroes for me. So yeah, my mum, my mum, and my granddad um, definitely are, are the big ones for me. Lovely. And finally, are there any books or any TED Talks? I know you're a fan of TED Talks. Any podcasts that are particularly inspiring that you're listening to or reading at the moment that you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, definitely. So one um, first podcast would be um, from The Strengths Guy. So uh, Dr. Paul Brewerton, uh, I would also recommend his book. Um, if you want to get to grips with um, with strengths and the definition of strengths, because it isn't about competencies and uh, learnt skills. And, and first and foremost, it's much more about your energizers. They're really short. Um, they, they come out every Monday, no longer than kind of seven minutes. I would thoroughly recommend having a listen to that. Really easy on your way to work. Brilliant, and that's uh, a podcast, is it? The strengths that, energizers. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a podcast. Um, if you can find any podcast with a lady called Lucy Sheridan on, so she's, um, she guests on, on lots of different ones, uh, more than I could, um, more than I could recommend, but, um, Lucy Sheridan is the world's first comparison coach wow. and 
she she's incredible and does so much stuff. I mean, if, if you've got Insta people, then I would follow her on Instagram. That's probably the, the best way to access her content. But some really incredible lessons and content on managing comparison, which if it affects us all, let's be honest. So um, I definitely, definitely give a shout out there. Um, and then um, a book that I'm, I'm, I'm part way through, but I'm going to recommend it anyway because it's awesome, um, is something called um, Five Deep Breaths, The Art of Mindful Parenting. And it's written by a lady called uh, Dr. Genevieve Von Lobb. And I heard her being interviewed last year on, on a podcast. Uh, and she wrote it pre, pre being a parent herself. And so she's um, a, a psychotherapist. And it is just brilliant. And it uh, it, it absolutely does. It is for it is for parents. But some of the things that I'm taking away from it, I'm bringing to my business. It's not just about working with the kids, um, but it really does help you kind of get to know yourself again and figure out what's made you you. Uh, I absolutely love it. So they would be my my biggest um, my biggest highlights at the moment. Fantastic. It's got some really great recommendations there. So in summary then for today, I mean, I've certainly learned a huge amount, Charlotte, from, from everything that you've been speaking about. So thank you ever so much for being on today's show. Really thank appreciate you. it. And for all of our listeners out there, I, I'd really encourage you to take Charlotte's advice and to actually go away if you have the time, and I know that you all do have the time, to do an A4 page of literally reflecting and thinking about your personal values and what it is that really motivates you. Think about your values, your skill set, try and get some feedback from friends or business colleagues alike and think about who it is that you really are and the times that you've really felt that pure joy like Charlotte says. Try and take a little bit of time for yourself and have that reflection time because those values and those strengths are really kind of step one to, to really being able to understand and then be able to strive for the success piece that we've talked about in today's show. And finally, bringing your whole self to work. I know we've talked about this an awful lot on podcasts to date, but I think it really is so critical and crucial for the success of future, future workforces. Bringing your whole self equals bringing a much better version of yourself and a more high energy version of yourself to work, which ultimately is much better for employers and for your, your colleagues alike. Because when people are feeling positive, they produce better results and they make the other people who are around them much happier as well. So thank you very much again, Charlotte, for being here with us today. Really appreciate it. I'm going to put all of the links to Charlotte's profile. You can find her on LinkedIn. And if you'd like to visit www.power-of-the-parent.com, all of her information will be on there. I'm also going to list down some of the the really inspiring sounding books that she's mentioned, some of these five deep breaths and Dr. Paul Brefferton on the strengths and energies podcast. These all sound fabulous. So Charlotte, if you can send me over some of those links, what I'll do is I'll include those in today's episode show notes at the end of today's show. Do visit us on www.laylamckenzie.com forward slash podcast where you can find all of Charlotte's information there and all of our historical podcast episodes. We are now with you weekly instead of fortnightly because things have been so so popular which i'm delighted to say and also we're available on youtube as well so you can go to youtube and visit the dial global youtube channel dial stands for diverse inclusive aspirational leaders and we are really looking forward to welcoming you there to our global community until next week thank you so much for listening and look forward to seeing you again soon bye for now thank you so much for watching the diverse and inclusive leaders podcast please do feel free to hit the like button below, or if you'd like to receive future notifications, do ping the notification bell here at the side. If you're interested in the audio version only, you can find it on the following streaming platforms. Any extra info and descriptions will be in the links below. Look forward to seeing you soon.